Hi folks, Robert Green here today with you to make it happen when it comes to VAC and your game. Stay tuned, we got an awesome video for you today. Let's make it happen. All right folks, here we are with the Steam VAC tutorial. I'm gonna go ahead and use Steamwork.net just to show you, but you can use C++ or any other Unity, Unreal plugin and other game engines as well. And Steamworks is very similar and works very similar in all of them. Let's go ahead and check this out. I recommend you head on over to GitHub where I left a link in the description. And what it does is it tells you how to install Steamworks.net. And at least if you're not using Unity, you can download it for free and check out how, how it works this way. And then you can add it into your actual programming. Let's get started here. First thing that we gotta do is, of course, install Steamworks. Here we are, we already have the Steam Manager. We wanna make sure it's initialized now. This is kinda old school, but restart app if necessary. And then I'm using the Steam Utils.get app ID. Of course, that's the app ID that is stored in the text file that you have. And of course, if it needs to restart, I go ahead and shut it down, application.quit. It just means to exit out the application. So we come over to the authorization. So what we want to do is make a new Steam networking identity and we're gonna set the Steam ID of the Steam user. So how we do that is because Steam's already initialized, with Steam user .get Steam ID is the user ID of the person who is playing. There's actual unique identifier from Steam. It's gonna create an H auth ticket. It's gonna return one. What I do is we'll call Steam user .get auth session ticket. What we'll do is on each auth ticket, it's what it'll return. We'll call Steam user .get authentication or the get auth session ticket. So we're gonna get the authentication ticket here and we're going to do it using our pending ticket. Now the pending ticket is just a byte type array and I set a PT max of 256 bit. The length that comes back of the ticket is 256. We're gonna reference the Steamworks identity that we put together. Now when we come over here, you'll see that I have ebegin authentication result. What I want is I'm gonna call, I'm gonna name it EBAS. EBAS is begin authentication session with the ticket that came back from the get auth session ticket. You must get the auth session ticket before you begin the authentication session and you're gonna use it. Now, you'll notice that I'm using the enumeration off of eBegin auth session result. And you know, there's a few of them. And what I do, I just look for to see if it's okay. If it's not, I'll just go ahead and end the session. You're gonna to need to end this authentication session session anytime the application quits or else it'll cause problems and to start this begin off session it calls a callback and a callback is on validate ticket response now to get this to happen we had to name a callback type and name it invalidation on awake we want to make sure that it creates this off ticket response that way whenever you call begin off session it'll come back on this response here now if you notice I didn't put a bunch of switch in case because I want you to understand what's happening. There's a log of what comes back and go ahead and log that back to you in your console. So if you want to see what's coming back, it's logged right there on line 62. What I do is I set a flag and I, and I put comments here so you know. And these are the filters. So we want to know if they're banned by VAC. And if they're banned by VAC, there's a global bull up here for cheater. That's so that you know if they've come back a cheater, not to let them into any scenes if you're still going to let the game play and just tell them that they're banned, which you should do. VAC requires it. We're just going to go ahead and uh, show you what happens. So we're going to say that they're flagged and they're a cheater. So they can't get into any scenes, any levels, or go any further than the beginning page. And all they see is that error. The next thing is, we're looking to see if they're banned from the game by the publisher issued ban. See, that's the second enumeration. So the first enumeration is EAuth session response VAC ban. This is VAC telling you they're banned by VAC. The second one is going to be the session response publisher issue ban. That means that you banned them. Here we're going to go down to the third enumeration 
which is e auth session response vec check timed out and this basically means they have a piece of software that's preventing them to talk to steam even though it's being ran by steam or steam's messing up which i don't let them any further but i tell them to reload just in case it is just something stupid like that then we're going to tell the user that they're logged in elsewhere on e auth session response logged in elsewhere uh we only want one if it's a multiplayer game you only want one person there of course we we're just going to look at the end because there's a few others and i'll type them up here for you these are all going to be in e auth session response auth ticket canceled invalidation you know there's a whole bunch these are just the ones that i think are important to people who are trying to implement vac in their game also you should have some kind of auth system on your client side with your game server and on destroy down here we want to prevent clients who cheat by destroying objects in the scene with cheat engine or something into this uh on the on destroy we want to make sure and you can even do this on on disable if it doesn't mess with the rest of your code to go ahead and end the auth session and shut down the application because if this is an object that needs to be around for security you need to go ahead and make sure it's around Thank you for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe. Peace.